Welcome back, everybody. My name is Blue Jay, and we are back once again at the Reverb Outpost. And today we're getting started in our snow cave at the very first crop farm and only crop farm that we've ever built in this world. This has gotten us through uh, the, the entirety of this series so far. We, we've grown wheat and potatoes and pumpkins and all sorts of stuff in here that we've used for various projects and for feeding ourselves. This was like our first sustainable source of food. And uh, it's, it's nostalgic and it's a little sad because this is one of the last times that we're going to use this crop farm because today we are going to be working on something very, very cool. We've got an awesome project. We're going to be building a nano farm. And if you don't know what that is, you'll be seeing it here in just a few minutes. It doesn't take too long to build. Uh, and then we're going to kind of expand on that. This is a design that I found from another YouTuber named Silent Whisperer. I'll leave the link to his tutorial in the description below because you're going to want to check that out. But let's head on over to our science center and we'll get started in just a moment. Okay, I've done a little scouting in the room and I think we're just going to continue on down the line here. Right next to us over here, that was the uh, the sugarcane farm that we built in the last episode. And I think that this is where we can build this one. It's small enough that it can go here. Uh, I've got some ideas in mind for storage for this and I may end up building a lot of the, the storage unit off camera. Uh, because it'll be very, very, very repetitive to stuff that we've done on this series before. You know, the massive auto-sorting storage system. It's the same circuitry uh, with a little bit of a twist, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. I'll show you the, the new stuff that we're going to do with it, um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do most of that off camera. Um, let's take that block back out, because what I want to do, I think we want to... Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where we want to start this farm, and actually... Um, what I was thinking was maybe we could dig this down a little bit uh, because a straight path, and this isn't exactly a straight path, it curves around the, the nether portal there, uh, but you know, a, a path without any ups and downs or, or, or lefts or rights or curves or anything like that, it can get a little bit boring. And so I, I was thinking about this and I thought maybe we could bring this path down a block or two just to give it a little bit of, you know, interest while we're walking through this area. Uh, and so before we get the farm in place, I want to kind of dig this area out and get it all situated, making it look good. Uh, and I'm not going to do a ton of work on the, the floor or walls in this area. We may not even complete the aesthetics for this in this episode. We'll do a little bit of it as much as we can. But what I'm thinking is I might hold off on some of that kind of work because the very next episode we're going to do something pretty special with this room uh and we're we're kind of winding this series down uh, truthfully if you've been if you've missed a few videos recently <laughs> Uh, we're going to probably end this series on episode 70. That doesn't mean the base is gone or that we are done with this, you know, this area. Uh, we're going to come back to the Reverb Outpost in a future uh, series of episodes. Uh, but we're, we're basically starting at episode one in a new survival series that will take place in the same world. But we're going to try to do a little bit different than we have here. It's going to be more focused on jumping from location to location. Uh, where do we want this? There's three blocks on that side. Uh, yeah, I think that's the middle. Let's do that right there. Uh, but the new series is going to focus on multiple locations. This one has focused entirely on Reverb Outpost. Uh, so if you've missed the conversations on that over the last couple of videos, don't worry, we are not abandoning, abandoning this uh, particular base. We are going to come back to it at some point in the future, but we are cranking along here. We're cooking out these projects right and left. Uh, the last couple episodes, we've completed projects pretty consistently, pretty fast, and I'm really happy with the progress we're making on this science center because I want this room to feel complete before we leave the Reverb Outpost for a temporary time span to start working on something else. And I'm so excited to show you guys a trailer that I'm I'm going to be working on here soon. I've already got a little you know mock-up fake scene in a testing world that will basically show off the build style. Uh, so be looking for that really, really soon. All right. So the redstone for this nano farm here, uh, we've got, dr uh, dispensers on the left and the right and the top of the dirt block. That's, that's right in front of that sticky piston that we placed down just a minute ago. Uh, so we're going to take our observer. Let's dig this area out a little bit because we need to get back there. 
Oh, the tedious process of digging stuff out. But I do want to show you guys this on camera a little bit because it's a pretty quick build. This part of the episode is going to go relatively fast. Um, but again, be sure to go check out Silent Whisperer's episode of uh, his tutorial on this. It's very, very cool. Uh, and he shows off a couple different designs. This is just the one that I chose to use. So the observer has the smiley face pointing forward out towards the dirt block in the front. Uh, and you know what? Let's, uh, let's make this look a little nicer. We're going to use, we need to grab some snow. We're going to use some snow blocks. Um, or do we want to use concrete? Let's go ahead and grab snow for the moment and we'll go ahead and grab the concrete as well. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I was thinking about using a, like a different color concrete for each part of the uh, the science center for each project, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to use snow for the moment. Had to run and get a couple of quartz stairs because I forgot this is a very crucial part of the build here. Uh, so we've got blocks uh, underneath the dispensers, and we've got a block... Um, no, let's grab our snow. Let's refocus here. There we go. Snow there and snow on the other side. And then we need a sideways stair there and then a stair facing just like that. And then you need to put water in the corner of that stair. Love the new water mechanics. That would have never done that in the old version of Minecraft. But basically that water source right there, that little tiny water source, will provide water for our dirt that we can till and make that into farmable area. So uh, then we need redstone pieces on top of both of those dispensers just like that. And then we also need to grab our repeaters and we'll throw a repeater on top of the observer going into the top dispenser. Uh, and then we need to come over here and we need to place a block down there. And then on top of that, a piece of redstone dust. And then on top of this block, we need another repeater set to two ticks. And then we need to put another block here because we don't want it to be dirt. And then we'll place another piece of redstone there and a block on top of that. And that is the entire circuit. So check this out. We can put a block right there and it fires that piston and pushes the, the dirt block out. And it will also fire those dispensers at the same time so that the bone meal will grow the crop and it'll grow it right before it shoots that piston out. That way the crop will grow, the piston will move the dirt block, it will break the crop, and then it'll drop it. Check it out. Oh, I forgot. We need to go grab our hoe real quick because we need to till that, that soil so that it becomes farmable. Uh, I think that's in our snow cave. So I'll be right back. All right, good to go. Let's farm that land and then we will put our seeds down and check it out. We don't have any bone meal in there yet, but basically this is a working system. If we had bone meal, that would grow into hay. And we'll test the whole thing out a little bit later. But what I want to do now is I want to expand on this design a little bit. This is something I'm adding and bringing to the table. I was actually watching one of Iskall's Hermitcraft Season 6 videos recently, and I didn't actually know you could do this before watching watching this video been playing Minecraft for like four and a half years and I've, I keep learning new things all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our hoppers here and just get a, a basic hopper line started. Uh, we won't complete this yet because that's going to go to the storage system, but we'll throw a hopper down there. It's underneath our, our dirt block where the, the crops will go. We're going to place a rail down and then we're going to get a mine cart with a hopper and throw that right there. And basically that right there will allow items to come through a solid block down into that minecart and then drop into the hopper. Uh, so we'll throw, let's throw something in there. Let's throw um, that. And it, it's gone. It disappeared, but there you go. We got a bunch of dirt funneling into that hopper. So that will make this system a little bit more automated. We don't have to stand right next to it to pick up all of the crops that get farmed. They will automatically drop down below into that minecart with a hopper and go on over to our storage system that we are going to build here in just a little bit. I figured it'd be a good idea to go ahead and test this out before we go any farther. So bone meal in all of the dispensers. We only have a little bit. We don't have a ton, uh, but it'll, it'll give us enough to test it out. So there we go. Yeah, look at that wheat dropping down. Look, 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 look. Oh, so exciting. This is going to be the fastest way of growing crops if we can get a good source of bone meal. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's working. So exciting. Our comment for the day says, you get colds a lot. Nice video, by the way. Amazing Gaming 02. 
For the next part of our video, we're heading on into the nether because we need to grab some soul sand. We only need one piece, but I don't have more than one left, I don't think, and we're going to need some soul sand for future projects. So we're going to go ahead and grab a ton of the stuff and just answer this question of the day, or it's actually not a question, it's a comment. Uh, so the comment of the day said that I get colds a lot, and that is actually uh, pretty true right now. <laughs> That is the life of a parent of very, very, very young kids. Uh, I didn't used to get sick this much before I had kids, but I, uh, I'm a sleeper myself. And part of having kids is, is knowing that your sleep schedule is going to shift, and sometimes it's going to shift suddenly. And this week is a perfect example of that. Uh, so my oldest son, he is just over two years old. We have another son who is just under one year old, so they're pretty close together in age. Uh, but my oldest son, he, this week, finally got the courage up to figure out how to climb out of his crib. <laughs> Which is not the safest thing in the world, especially if, you know, mom and dad are sleeping at night. And, you know, he decides to want to climb out and go exploring around the house or, you know, whatever. We've got baby gates and all the safety stuff up. But, you know, there's always that factor of, you know, you don't want him wandering around the house at night while, you know, while everybody else is sleeping. So we have, you know, made the next step with parenthood and we bought our kid a toddler bed. And it has been an adventure so far, let me tell you. It's only been a couple of nights and the first night was a little bit rough. He, he wanted to get out of bed every five minutes. <laughs> it's just exciting. It's something new, something he's never done before. Uh, and so, you know, that's one example of how, like, life can just shift and turn at a moment's notice. And I just have this weird, like, thing that if I don't get enough sleep, uh, I, I, I get, like, cold symptoms and I get sick. And uh, that's just something that I've had my entire life. I, I Ever since I can remember, like, even when I was, like, a teenager, even when I was a little kid, I always, like, felt like I was getting a stuffy nose or getting a cold or something like that if I didn't get enough rest. And that's just, that's just exaggerated when you have kids yourself because you're always getting up in the middle of the night doing things, you know, helping them get their blankets back on or helping them go back to sleep if they've got a bad dream or things like that. And that's just part of parenting. It's a joy. It's awesome. I love being a parent. Uh, but yeah, I do, I do get colds a lot now. <laughs> It's just part of the territory. It's all good. It's a lot of fun. I love it. It's totally worth it. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. All right, just finished up another resource gathering mission. We went out into our little spruce forest right outside the base to get some more trees because we need the logs, we need the wood, we need to craft them into storage. Can we get them? Yeah, yeah, we can. Let's, oh, we want that gunpowder, so let's get rid of something. There we go. Uh, yeah, we want that gunpowder for rockets in the future, uh, but we, 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 we need some wood so we can craft them into chests so that we can make hoppers, which the next thing that we need to do is go over to our iron farm. It's been a long time since I've been over here. I can't remember if I went over here recently on camera or not, but we're going to run in there anyway. I want to show you guys how much iron has accumulated. The, the last time that I showed you guys the, the accumulation part of it was probably when we built the beacon or the storage system, which that basically depleted all of our iron resources. We didn't have anything left, but check it out. Here's how much we got. <laughs> oh, it's like a third of the chest is already filled. Oh, and look at that. Just to prove that it's still working. We've got an iron golem that dropped in. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry this has to be on camera. But, but thank you for your contribution to our projects. I really appreciate it. Thank you. As promised, I went ahead and completed the storage system without building it on camera. Because you guys have seen this a thousand times. Basic auto-sorting system. Uh, let's run on over here. This is where things get a little bit interesting. I've already dug this area out. Uh, this is where we're going to put down our little dispenser uh, comparator clock thingamajigger that we did in the snow farm episode. So we've got a dropper there uh, to drop the items out. Then we need to get our comparators, and this will detect when there's an item in the dropper. And then we need our uh, pickaxe so we can dig this back farther, because I apparently dig didn't dig it out far enough. Uh, let's get our repeaters. Throw a repeater down there. We need another block, so let's grab some snow. Keep things a little consistent with this build, even though you're never, ever, 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 
ever going to see this. It's all below ground. It's hidden from sight. Redstone torch. And then dust, dust. Um, is that right? Ah, I'm throwing myself off already. That's not right. We need to break this dust and throw a repeater down. Uh, let's grab our snow and we'll place that there. And then repeater goes there. I forgot. I reversed this. There we go. Right there. Perfect. Okay, so then redstone dust again over here, like so, so, so. Perfect. There is the working system. Let's test it out. Throw that gravel in the dropper, and there you go. Shot out into the little crevice there. We, we picked it back up. That's okay. Uh, so then we need to probably plug this up, because if I can grab that through the side of the wall, we, we just don't want to take any risks that it might lose any of our items. So now we need soul sand. That's why we went to the nether. And yes, we're only using one of the pieces of like four and a half stacks that we got. Uh, we're going to use soul sand for some other stuff in the future. And I plan to do a lot of these water elevators for various projects because they're so cool. Like the new water mechanics. Brilliant. I love it. And I, I, I don't know that I'm ever going to build an actual redstone elevator ever again. I, I have one in the sheep farm, so I can say I've done it on this channel. So if you ever want to want to take a look at that, you know, go look at it. And maybe we'll get nostalgic in the future. But seriously, what is cooler than watching the items just flying up a water tunnel? It's it's amazing. And now we'll throw some water on top of that soul sand. If you've never built one of these before, I can't remember if I did this on camera last time or not. Look at those seeds just bouncing. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my goodness. That's, that's why this new water mechanic is fantastic. Uh, if you've never built one of these water elevators before, every single block has to be a source block. So you can't just drop one water bucket down at the top of the elevator. Uh, you've got to go all the way up. Now, what you can do, I don't know if I've got any seaweed. I think I do somewhere, but uh, maybe if we do another one of these in the near future, we'll, we'll do it this way because I want to show it to you. Uh, if you have seaweed, you can drop one water block at the very top of the elevator and then grow seaweed or plant seaweed all the way to the top. Can I get out of here, please? There we go. Uh, wow, I am bouncing way up in the air. Let's break that glass so we can get out, so we can go get some more water. Um, oh, 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 stop digging. Man, that thing just keeps sticking like that. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, so if you grow seaweed all the way to the top and then break the bottom one and it collapses all of the, the, the seaweed or kelp or whatever it's called, um, if you do it that way, then it automatically turns all of the water in that, that uh, elevator shaft into source blocks. So that's kind of a, a quick, easy way to do it if you've got uh, kelp on hand. But this is the way that we're going to choose to do this one today because I don't have any of that stuff with me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do all of this off camera. And once the water elevator is finished, we'll continue on with the next part of the project. Alrighty, let's check out all these hoppers here. We've got carrots, and we've got potatoes, we got wheat, we got seeds, we got beetroot, and beetroot seeds. So that's all the stuff that you can farm. As far as I can remember, if I'm leaving out any crops, I'm going to feel like a total noob, and I, I'm going to be really embarrassed. But I think that's everything. I'm not counting, like, uh, the uh, the melons or pumpkins, because we'll do a separate farm for those at some point in the future. Uh, not sure whether it'll be in the science center or not, but... We will have to see. It's not on my current list of immediate projects to do before the series is over, uh, but we will get around to something like that sometime in the future. Um, let's go ahead and fix this up. I need to make this look a little bit better before we put the water in because I don't want to have to fight the water, uh, you know, the water flow once that's in place. So let me fix this up and then we will complete the transfer system to get all the items into the, the, the proper chest. So I'll be right back. We are nearly there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hop on up here and drop a water bucket down. And you see the water flow into the left there. Let's go ahead and plug the top of this so items don't shoot out the top of the elevator. Uh, and they should just flow on to the left. Oh, 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 we gotta, we gotta plug this up. Water flow, water flow, there we go. Um, let's drop down and... I didn't, I didn't see water going across. What happened? Why is it hung up there on, on that one block? It should theoretically flow. Why are you not flowing? What if we, what happens if we place water there? 
Nothing. What happens if we place water there? Lots of stuff happening. Not going where we want it to. Uh, let's, uh, maybe plug this up, see what happens. Oh, okay, okay. That's what we're wanting to happen. We want the water to flow all the way across the system. So let's go ahead and throw these seeds into our little, uh, farm here and see what happens. Okay. And we've got a working system so far. But I... Oh, I don't see him going. They're pooling at the top. Huh. Let me figure that out. I'll be right back. All right, we should be in business now. Let's run on over here and drop something. Let's grab the seeds. Let's drop the seeds into the system and pretend that they grew and, and we harvested it. And there they go, flying up the water elevator. Perfect, 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 as they should. And yes, 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 yes. The reason why those do not drop down into the hoppers before they get to the appropriate one, uh, which is this chest right here, is because of the item filter. If you don't know how, how item filters work, then uh, go back and watch any number of the, the episodes that I did on auto-sorting storage systems. Or, or just YouTube it, because there's a lot, a lot out there. This is not my design. It's a pretty standard design. Let's go ahead and throw potatoes, and for good measure, let's throw some wheat in there as well. And we should see those flying up the system, and the potatoes are dropping down into that second chest there. Perfect. And the wheat goes on into the third, where it should go. Uh, and yeah, we have a working system. This is exciting stuff, man. You know, I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to go ahead and do a little bit of aesthetic design for this, and we got some item frames in place to show what each chest contains. Let's go ahead and grab some potatoes. We got 53 potatoes, and let's give this a little test to, to use this farm how it's intended. So we'll go ahead and, and harvest a couple of crops, and I, I don't think we have much bone meal, so we won't be able to do this very much. Yeah, we only, we've only got one left. And there we go. We are all out of bone meal. Let's run on back over here, and we should see the potatoes flying into the system. Uh, yep, saw one go into the hopper there, and ooh, we got 12 in there already. 59. We started with 53. Uh, yeah, we got a, a, a surplus of six potatoes after just a couple of seconds, so that is pretty fantastic. So hopefully in, in the not-so-near, but hopefully not crazy distant future, <laughs> we're, we're going to get a consistent source of bones, but that's going to have to wait for now. It's that time again to add somebody to the Red Squadron subscriber barracks, and today we are adding L Legend. L Legend, welcome to the Red Squadron subscriber barracks. Seen your name pop up a lot recently in the last like five or six videos, commenting, leaving really helpful comments. So thank you. Keep that up. Welcome. Hope you enjoy your stay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time that I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm really excited about this nano farm. Another thing that I've never, ever built in Minecraft before. In my four and a half years of playing this game, I've never built a nano farm. I've never built a sugarcane farm before the last episode. So it's really fun to be charting new territory with you guys. I hope you are enjoying this and are excited about it just like I am. I'm actually in the watchtower right now because I'm about to fly on out of here, like legitimately, for real. I'm gonna I'm gonna go fly uh, somewhere else in this world to, to go resource gathering because I've got a massive project planned for the next episode. And I wanna go ahead and do some of this work off camera. Before we get started, it's gonna be super cool. Another build that I've never ever attempted before, at least on this scale. I've done a little tiny version of this in the testing world, but I'm really excited to show you what we're gonna do in the next episode. So I need to get on out of here, get to doing some resource gathering. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a comment to let me know what you did enjoy about it. And subscribe if you're not already so that you don't miss any of the videos I've got coming out in the future. But for now, my name is Blue Jay, and I've got to fly on out of here. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>